Well, I have with me the 17-year-old international master of India, Divya Deshmukh. Hi, Divya. Hi. Divya, you become recently an IM at the Baku Open. Uh, how is the feeling? First of all, is it a normal feeling? Because there are a, you know, you reached 2400, what, like three years ago or four years ago? Yeah, three years ago. Three years ago. So right now is the feeling huh. like, great, I achieved IM title or is it like, okay, that was bound to happen? I think it's a mix of both because I've missed the title a couple of times. I just needed one more now mm. and I've been missing it for like a couple of times. So I think it was more or less bound to happen. So yeah, it's, I think it's normal. When did you score your uh, three IM norms? Like, when were the first, second? I was 13, I think, when I scored my first norm. Wow. And then I scored it when I was 15. So, it's it's happening on a, a two-year basis. <laughs> so, I scored it at 13, 15, 17. Wow. And, and I have this, uh, your graph there. If we look at 2019 Feb. At that point, you were at 2127. And then all of a sudden, in the next two lists, you reached 2400 plus. Yeah, you were like 2420 or something. And then uh, from there, okay, then your rating got a little lower. Then the pandemic came and then it was all stagnant until say July, June, July 22. How tough was this phase for you? Because now your worm has started to move upwards. You're back on 2400. You've scored your IM norms as well. So just take us through this phase. How how difficult was it for you? Uh, okay, so this phase, during the COVID phase, I had practically almost not left chess. Yes. I was not practicing chess. I remember I you were studying for giving exams. Giving my exams. Yeah. But <laughs> Yes. So I was studying for my exams for almost one year. And I think during the period of 2020 to 2022, I barely played any tournaments, like barely four or five. Uh -huh. And then after after finishing my exams, I slowly got back to chess and then I started playing a lot more. And after that point, I think the graph started to go upwards. Uh -huh. How difficult is it to sort of transition from academics to chess, back to academics? Uh, has it been tough for you? Uh, I Yeah, it has been tough for me because last month only I was giving my exam. Which, which, so these which exam? past two months, my 12th standard. Okay, wow. So I was giving board exams and these last two months I, w I had barely touched any chess. And I was just continuously studying for giving the exams. So, and then I finished my exams on 27th of uh, May. No, not May. Uh, 27th of April. And then within five days, I was playing here in Baku. So I barely had oh like any time to do anything. So it is, I would say it is quite hard to transition between it. But if you know how to manage your time, I think it's quite possible. Yeah, I mean, managing time would be one thing, but then coming and performing like this in the tournament where you managed to <laughs> beat uh, Grandmaster Timur Garev, Bharat Subramaniam, you drew with Harsha Bharat Koti, you uh, also drew with Igor Ihor Samunenkov. You played with some of the best sort of talents, youngsters. You played with some experienced GMs. And to score five points out of nine, that is just phenomenal. Thank you. I would say most of these games were more about uh, resistance than anything. Because in half of these games, I was dead minus. And it was just me trying to push something out of a dead loss position. And thankfully, it happened. But uh, yeah, all of these are like, really good players and I'm glad that I played against them. Yeah, talking about this resistance, I want to go and check your games because this is what I also felt that you just did not give up. And when you did not give up, even very strong 2600 plus players faltered and you know went wrong. 
so if we can have a look at those games like couple of them uh, i want to get your thoughts and your mindset on how okay. to fight how to keep fighting in such positions okay let's let's look at uh, timur garev's game okay and timur is a player with who is uh, always very okay, so exciting this... Yes, it's it was so hard to prepare against him because all he does is sideline crazy lines, and I had no idea what to do. So, I, and also I think uh, before this round, I had quite an upsetting loss against Ritwik because I was in a clearly winning situation, mm -hmm. and I messed it up very badly. So I was not in much of a mood to prepare. I just thought that whatever happens, I deal with it on the board. Okay. So I saw. And also, my color broke, so I got black with Ritwik, and then I again got black with Timur. So I just continued on with my preparation for from the day before. But the issue was that Ritwik and Timur are completely opposite players, <laughs> and <laughs> well, Ritwik is very so tall. So what I <laughs> exactly so. So when I prepared for Ritwik, there was this one specific line that I thought, okay, maybe he wouldn't go because it's like super, super sharp and uh, it's very unclear, complicated. So I had doubts that Ritwik would go into it, but what I did not consider is Timur would definitely go into it. So he I, went into it, and I know what you are saying. I was, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> because night before i mean any positional player would play the moon night a3 then kick exactly. the night away exactly but timur was like let's go for it now do you want to come in see yeah <laughs> did you did you prepare this uh no i didn't no you did not you did i not. knew that c4 no no i knew that c4 was a lot i didn't uh... And uh, it, it it was just crazy on the board. I think your voice broke for a second. You uh, you said C four was something that you hadn't you knew it, but you hadn't prepared. Yes, huh? I knew it. I knew that the line existed, but I had no knowledge of it. My God! So so let uh, okay. Firstly, I mean now if you have said A, you must say B. You have to go to C two. Uh, then he took on exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and now you can't take here, right? E D five. Yeah, I think knight h four is the knight issue. H4. I'm not sure. I yeah. think knight h four. Knight h four yeah. is just winning for him. So because then your bishop doesn't have like if here he were to play knight h four, you can uh, take on a one, and then at least your bishop is defended. So that's not a problem. Yeah. So here he took you took on a one. He now played this move e four. Uh, imagine. someone playing all these moves quickly who is well prepared and you have no like you are not prepared this must have been very stressful he was blitzing out his moves it was so stressful and also he had this uh, thomas with him and it had t in it and he was just continuously pouring t and he was you know was so calm about it so chill and he's just drinking his tea casually and here i am with this position on the board no idea what to do <laughs> <laughs> okay so you took here and now he took this even giving up another piece on b1 if you want to take it yeah i i did not even consider it you come on i'm not that stupid to get my king mate it <laughs> because take take and i think after something like 95 it's a very powerful attack that he has yeah i think it should just be gone yeah the black something here then this bishop joining in later it's getting very dangerous c6 bishop takes c6 okay anyway so this is big trouble here so he took you took back with the pawn he played knight c3 hitting your bishop and now you took on f3 took back knight f6 here the a uh, good point for me was that when i took on bishop f3 uh he started thinking a bit he was just blitzing till here so i thought that okay there in theory maybe so then i took bishop f3 and he started to think and i'm like okay good i'm not the only one thinking and then slowly his time started to uh, go a little bit down so that was quite a relief for me nice because 
now you have given up this b7 pawn and how do you make these decisions because you know here you could have also played something like c6 trying to defend your uh, b7 pawn so how did you realize that okay now i need to focus on development first uh i did actually consider c6 like c6 was the why i played bishop f3 and i was going to go but the issue with c6 was that the first of all i'm a rook up so i don't need to worry about material i just need to get my king to safety but the thing is my king is extremely unsafe so if i delay uh, my development trying to save a pawn i might just get made out of nowhere right so i had to make sure my king was safe first and i don't think i have to worry about the material because i'm having is a rook up Mm -hmm. very very nice point there so you developed bishop b7 rook b8 check you brought your i think f7 is a nice safe square for your king yeah it's cute and he played d5 and here you uh, know he was playing all the moves i was hoping he wouldn't play <laughs> that that's what 26 17 rating does yeah they generally yeah. play good moves yeah. so e5 yes. You you decided to keep it closed. Uh, you didn't take on d five. I I as soon as I played e five, I realized that maybe I should have taken, and uh, it would have been better for me. But I think e five was it was a bit dubious. But okay, I wanted to prioritize my king. So. Isn't there the one game of yours against Nubair Shah Sheikh where also he played some d five and then you played e five, which was not the best. Uh, where you had all these queens and all that had happened, remember? Oh, was it yes, that structure? Yes. Yeah, I remember. I don't remember the d five e five thing, but I remember the queens being yeah, on the board. Yeah, of course, the game was epic. Uh, but but I think this is your style. Yeah, even though objectively it might not be the best, if you believe that it's easy for you to play, you go for it. I think so. Yeah. Okay, Bishop g five. And now you played this very. I mean, okay, you 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 could have just developed maybe try for rook f8, king g8, but then I think you got a bit creative. You were like, okay, let me lift my rook up. No, I I was not about creativity. I was just stopping knight e4. Ah, you just wanted to stop this. So it was prophylactic here, trying to stop yeah. this. Uh, he he could have also taken the knight. Queen takes a1, but he went queen huh. e2. I actually missed Queen E two completely. I I did not consider that he can move the queen and then take the knight. So I thought, okay, he takes Queen E one. I'll be at least a little bit decent because his queen is badly placed. But then he played Queen E two, and I'm like, oh, what what to do now? Now Knight E four is again coming. So you were a bit worried about that. Yeah. But now you find now this is this is the fighting Divya, which is now coming out. Queen c8, nice little move because now you want to go, I guess, at some point here or to g4 to trade the queens. Yes. Nice. So he took. You came in here, queen g4, good move. She uh, now he took, and you developed. Yeah, this Check. is this is a first move. Here I was actually a bit surprised when he played queen e6. Hmm. Because I was calculating queen e three and I couldn't find the refutation for it. Because see, materially, I think white white is doing okay. He has compensation. My king is quite weak, and uh, he'll also get a few pawns here and there. So I think white is doing okay. Uh, here I was calculating knight e four takes. Uh, I had two options. I could take with the queen and then go into the end game. Or I could take with the rook, which I was preferring. But the only issue with rook e4 was that I couldn't find anything after bishop d7, and then Ooh. my rook is just very badly placed. Wow, what a move! Okay, and the point is, if you take queen takes, then e4 hangs, and if you take rook takes e3, then bishop takes g4, and somehow your rook is yeah, going to I be get get trapped or what? Exactly, the rook was kind of getting trapped, and I didn't like this position at all for black. Wow. Maybe he can go bishop f five or something. Bishop e six and bishop e three. Bishop e six, king here. Bishop e three. I think white can easily defend this. And defend or maybe press here, right? Yeah, maybe even press because my rook is so horrible. Correct. Correct. 
But okay, he he Both gave a check. He thought that after take take king takes and rookie one king f seven rookie two, this position even though he's exchanged down, he has like the two bishops and a good structure. Hmm. He felt I I guess he was still playing for a win here, yeah, no? Or or what did you feel? Uh, I think so, but I can't be sure because uh, queen e three just felt more to play for a win. Correct. For me. Correct. At six, bishop e three, bishop e five. Yeah, I messed up very badly. Yeah, yeah. yeah there as was this... soon as I played bishop e five, I realized he has a three, and I'm pretty much. I had no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. I I think I'm losing the rook, and uh, yeah, I was so scared when I played bishop e five. I was calculating this whole thing, and I I don't know for what reason I completely ignored a three, and then when I played it. It it happens every time. Every time I play a move, and then I realize, oh, I've blundered. <laughs> right, that happens a lot to all the players. But b three, the main point is bishop b five with the idea of bishop c four. Yes. Yeah, that is what was missed here by you. Uh, but he also missed it. He didn't play a three, and he played takes here, which Thankfully. which gave you now uh, very good. Okay, chances. now this I think. Easy to defend for black, and now I think I started to. Both of us were in time trouble at this point, so we were just blitzing our moves. I was trying to get my king to safety so that it, my king and rook couldn't be pinned at some point. Uh, and then I think it was bound to happen that he would mistake, uh, make a mistake because we were both playing almost on one minute. Oh, uh, tell me something. uh when you get such a position now you knew that the first half of the game you were in trouble you were out of your prep then you were under pressure and now you're slowly fighting back many times i've seen players are happy with a draw in such a situation then they are like okay now that i'm equal i'm happy with a draw were you like now that i have gotten the best position that i have i must <laughs> play for a win was that your mindset uh it usually is but i think you need to be a little bit objective and see the reality of the position if you can actually press for a win or if it's just a plain draw if it's a plain draw then doesn't make sense to play for a win but if you can press i believe in pressing mm. you can quickly for adjust your mind to new situation i think that's one of the key aspects of playing inferior positions you have to be flexible Yeah, you have to be flexible, and you also need to adjust to the new situation. Like if I know, uh, it can happen sometimes that you felt you came from a really bad position, and then now you're equal. So you just in your mind, you kind of like give up, and you're like, "Oh, it's okay, it's fine. Even if I make a draw, it's fine." Right. But uh, yeah, I I don't really like that approach. I, I think you are always looking for opportunities, and uh, is that is that something that. You developed since a very young age, or you consciously try to build it up. It's definitely not conscious. I was not aware about it. Yeah, because uh, I have seen even world class players uh, who have gotten worst po worst positions. Then when they equalize, they are like, okay, happy with the draw, enough for today. Uh, but you are always ambitious, so this is a very big skill. It sometimes leads me into huge trouble. True. But yeah, pros and cons. Absolutely. Okay, now you went knight f five. He went h four, and you played rook b eight. He had to move his bishop back somewhere, let's say to d two, but he played. I mean, he was h4. trying his best not to exchange mm -hmm. any of the bishops because bishop pair is the only thing that has him in the game, and if he exchanges that, it would become a lot easier for me. Correct. And now you found a great move. You played rook c b six. Very nice. Bishop c two and again very alert, chopping off the h four pawn, and then playing c five because the knight was hanging here anyway. C five was coming, but first why don't we pick a pawn and then this, and and here um, did you feel like now you are winning this position or this is still drawn? I was calculating. I was a little bit unsure, but uh, I knew that it had to be a win because I saw the wins. Mm -hmm. But then, when I got closer to the position, like the main 
uh, position and i was like oh maybe it's not so easy hmm. and i would have to fight a bit and then i messed up you messed up here i think this is winning right now yeah yeah i mean not like messed up messed up that i lost the win i still had the win but it became a lot more difficult than it was hmm. so here no, no, not this point a little bit back okay here so no no <laughs> no second here yeah. when uh, when i played kiwi six ah sorry okay here yeah yes so here uh, i think i had bishop at seven i think i had the opportunity to, to just go with the king and get it to d4 and it would be just dead loss but the issue here was i was calculating king d5 king f5 rook b6 to stop the king from entering bishop g8 king d4 bishop e6 king e3 and here the i thought that after king uh, e5 and i i'll have to fight it a bit because then he'll get f5 or something but i don't know why i just completely you forgot the pawn in game ah. yeah yeah i forgot this is just clearly winning i don't know why i thought it was a draw hmm. but uh, yeah this is winning and i could have won way earlier than i did but i think you but, never let the win go away right you were I don't think you can let the win go in this situation, <laughs> but it was getting very hard to find the win. Correct. Yeah, here it's not so easy. Uh, but you, I think yeah. he, he played bishop f seven. He just faltered at hmm. this point. But I was finding it difficult to find a plan. I found a lot of plans, but all of them had some or the other issues with it, so it was a bit hard. Brilliant. So this was a great example of how you fight. uh and uh, now let's go to the next game that you played this was against bharat bharat subramanian uh, he uh -huh. is actually very very talented youngster and uh, you were playing white pieces next round instantly was it uh, the next day or the same day yes it, no no it's next day. next day and we will join the game somewhere here uh and you are white so okay <laughs> because okay <laughs> because your position looks quite bad at this point. although you have an extra pawn here with white uh, but look at your pieces knight on g2 i mean bishop is telling the knight maybe i'm I aware so good way i played this game <laughs> i'm just trying to get our viewers to get acquainted with the position uh, and uh -huh. you had this under control that knight d3 you will take the queen did bishop takes f2 come like a surprise or you had seen it i had seen it but i had not seriously considered it i did not think that he would actually go for it because i thought i would get two pieces but then i realized my king was extremely weak and he would grab a lot of pawns so yeah it it was not exactly a surprise but still not a surprise right so he you took with the queen knight d3 and now you have two pieces for a rook but, but now he's taken one of your pawns and look at each pawn all isolated and weak so at this point now take take us through your thinking uh, is it like oh my god i'm going to lose this w what do you think in such positions uh i felt a bit sad because uh all of my pieces are very discoordinated not uh, like uncoordinated at all and uh, i don't know i don't have any thoughts because i was running low on time i think both of us were down on time at this point and uh, i just wanted to protect all my pawns what is here one is there so it's it's very hard and my king is very weak mm. but i didn't want to like go off the pawn and i blundered it the, right the next move you you just blundered the f5 pawn here i just blundered queen c5 like i saw queen c5 but i thought i had bishop c2 pinning it but i missed queen e5 right just unpins it so now you are two pawns down also your king is weak and i would say like most of the players would be really upset at this point but you start fighting back i was a bit upset but i had no choice with that effect true bishop d5 
I think one of your ideas was to plonk your bishop here with c4 and then continue. Yeah, the bishop is yeah. well placed. Yes. But he, huh. he stopped it. He said no c4 coming in. Uh, bishop c6, <laughs> rook c8. And now this is a classy move, queen d4. Like, it's a, it's a little move. I know that he cannot take. Of course, he understands that. But it's, it's a very irritating move somehow. Yeah, it is because then it also prevents black from giving any checks to the king. Yeah, and it's threatening bishop d seven, and your it's all, your pawn is also threatened. Correct. This this everything is hanging. Uh, okay, b five not now, but could hang. Queen g five, h four again, slightly slightly improving your position, and and he could have actually kept the pawn with queen h five, but he he went queen e seven. Could he? I don't know. Like queen h5. I think a7 is going here. Ah, you take here. Possible. Huh. Maybe he can give a check and take perhaps. I don't know. No, but okay. I'll get the p5 pawn then. Mm -hmm. So he, he decided Oh, to... maybe you can... Uh, he, I don't know. a7. And then you mm, took he just... here. Queen c7 check. King Here king. we both were in 30 seconds and then I played king d1 and I was like, okay, enough. I'll just get up from my board now. I cannot deal with this anymore. Yeah, this was 40th move. Yeah, this was 40th. And, and this, were you concerned about this position? Would you have taken on a7 or taken the queen? I No, no. If I took the queen, then it's just Lost. begging for a draw. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not even that. I mean, this, <laughs> this seems lost. So it's just to... lost, yes. Yeah. Queen e7, the, I was a lot worried about queen c3. I was calculating all sorts of variations like queen e1, king f2, queen e5, and then king f2, rook c2, and how I'm losing the piece in every situation. But what I missed was, I, after queen e1, I just have bishop f1. Oh. I can just protect the bishop. So then, after a while, I realized, oh, I have pushed back front, and I was a little bit calm. And he didn't even take it. He played at six, and you ha. you played a four. I think now, if if he had taken this, you would have still taken here. So same thing, yeah. He Queen went rook d eight. You went back. Queen a five. Queen a five. Actually, the queen is not so well placed there, right? Uh, yeah, I think his main point was to just move my bishop away from b5 and that whole thing. Ah, you mean a6, a6 he wants to play. Okay, got it. Huh. So and he wants to make my bishop one more. So. a6, you went bishop c4. And and the thing is, he can he take this here? No, just bishop c I see this is this again a small little thing that that is very <laughs> important to tactically you need to be very aware right when defending because you have to spot yeah. all these little chances which come your way so can't take on a4 he went here king h2 queen f6 you pushed your pawn to h5 the... at this point i was kind of sure that i'll make a draw because ah. now my pieces are way better placed and uh, all of them and my king is not so weak as it was mm. and now it was time for him to get a little less ambitious and take this pawn right or something or he, <laughs> he can, still, I can still play with this is, yeah this is still coming yeah but he said okay let me go queen h4 king g2 would you have taken a draw like queen h4 queen g4 yeah, I would have because mm. I don't see I have much of a choice. I actually offered him a draw at okay. this point. Okay. But he, he wanted to play for a I win. I played queen f3. Yeah, he wanted to play for a win. Uh, I don't... I mean, it is a draw position. It's 0. 0.00. Mm. But uh, I played queen f3 and offered a draw. My plan here was to just go knight g6. And if anybody was pressing at that point, it would be me. Right. And I couldn't fla find plans for him to make a, a like grind out a win but it's okay but you know somehow he kind of in this inertia of winning he started to over press here and now your position started getting better c4 king coming you see the beauty yeah. is that 
earlier your pieces were all poorly positioned not at all coordinating but now look at the coordination everyone's working together yes so very nicely done i think the only point uh, that the rook is better is when the pe- against two minor pieces is when the pieces are hugely uh, not coordinated mm. and once they get coordinated it's very simple to play uh, when when you have the minor pieces correct correct absolutely rook b8 c5 c6 knight g2 now your king is also very safe it, it, the queen has no look at this queen has no checks rook has no checks because of the this is teamwork uh, queen b6 yeah queen take on f7 queen c5 knight comes up king king is also joining in now and now bishop <laughs> comes to g2 such a such a nice uh, game this is I, i mean the second half for you king at 7 queen f5 rook b3 king h2 and now knight comes back with a check and he resigns what a fight yeah this is just brilliant uh, divya and i think these two games thank you were such testaments to your fighting uh, spirit and we also understood although you didn't express it in words because i guess it's not even very clear for you why you are such a big defender i think there were clear patterns firstly you just take one move at a time like you don't think oh my god i'm losing secondly you are always tactically alert third you are objective and you see what best can be done i mean these are little skills which are very important thank you okay brilliant so divya now i the yeah go on <laughs> No, no, nothing. nothing. No, no, you are going to gone. say something. Please, please. I was going to say the voice is breaking, but it doesn't make sense anymore because now it's not. Ah, okay. That's why you are not reacting. I was trying to tell all the things that your uh, other skills for huh. defense. Uh, that you are a very good defender. You take huh. one move at a time. You are able to sort of look at small tactics. Your objective, and I think all of these things help you to be a good defender. thank you anyway my voice broke you said thank you now you could hear my voice you still said thank <laughs> you so there was no difference as such <laughs> between you being able to hear or not but i think divya is right now in baku uh, after the tournament and her internet is not that great yeah um it's it, it's perfect it's perfect why do i look so animated yeah i think uh, your internet connection is not good that's the main issue Yeah, but I look so animated. I am a real human being. <laughs> animated version of Divya right now. Exactly. <laughs> do you do you watch animated movies? No, I mean I I watch Tom and Jerry and all that, but so I don't you, really. You don't have animated. these uh, superhero films or something that you like or nothing of that sort. Marvel? No, no. Ah, okay. I don't awesome so divya now uh, you have reached a stage like you are now an im 2400 17 years old you one of the best in the world one of the best juniors um what's what's next for you will you still uh, will you play a lot of tournaments now or you are going to study no no i am done with studying for now so i am <laughs> i'm going to play chess for now and hopefully keep uh, keep playing chess for a while mm-hmm. and see how it goes what what are your plans now uh, are you going to play some tournaments uh no now i'll be taking a bit of a break and then i'll be playing from next month okay and i after that i think i have a bit of a hectic schedule Mm. But now, now I cannot because these last two months were really tough. I had to give exams, and then r- uh, right after it, I had to play this tournament. So I need a bit of a break, and then I can get back. What does a break? This animated thing is annoying me so much. <laughs> okay, people can ignore it. Uh, what What does a break for you look like when you are not studying or playing chess? What do you do? uh sleep <laughs> i 
I catch up on the sleep I missed. And then uh, since now I'm in Baku, so I'm in I'm roaming around with my family. Mm. Uh, and usually I would just sleep and rest a bit and do whatever I want, watch Netflix or chill, just normal things. Got it. Got it. Uh, and uh, who are the people who have helped you? to achieve this uh, right now like who are you working with and maybe some people you would like to mention apart i mean of course your family has played a big role yeah I was, I, that was going to be your only answer my family because i obviously cannot tell who i'm working with oh. but uh, i'm super grateful to them <laughs> when will when will them. when will uh, <laughs> we get to know who is you, who are you working with or trainers are because i think you have always been like okay not this time maybe not when i when you are wgm okay maybe at im now you are im maybe at gm <laughs> maybe you will become a gm then super gm you we'll never know whom you are working with okay i promise i promise if i am to make it public you would be the first person i would tell Okay, maybe we make a deal. I can give you that right. When when you become a GM, right? Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, cool. So then maybe by the end. Of Unless this... it's in with it's within this year, <laughs> then it's not good. <laughs> this is what I was going to say. Maybe by the year end, we'll get to know because you are in such good form, <laughs> and I think very likely that you will become a grandmaster. Uh, but but Divya, it was an absolute pleasure. uh talking to you getting to know your thoughts you. uh, and everything here and also your future plans and i'm so glad that you're going to play chess now for at least a few months and we'll see you in action for more tournaments thank, thank you. you it was such a pleasure to talk to you bye